Welcome mates, I am Bloodthirsty Lord by Yunkoin Lordy and so back on Gotham Knights highlighting a topic of how things have changed for Gotham Knights overall, highlighting a mostly positive reaction and reviews on the Steam page by the PC players on Steam. So we'll talk about those reviews and what they think about it as well and give some points and discussions of our own within this video. Make sure to click the subscribe button and also the bell notification button with all notifications on to keep up to date and also press that join button to become a member on the channel. So without further ado, Let's get straight into this. So Gotham Knights has officially been out for more than a week and there's been a lot of interesting experiences that people have had on Gotham Knights overall and everyone's voiced their opinions. We've seen opinions voiced by other reviewers from day one as they were given early copies in order to play the game early and make a review on day one. And this obviously had some issues since there wasn't a day one patch and there were some issues prior to it that were just going kind of crazy like drop frames and such. We'll talk about this as we go. But mostly all the reactions to the game publicly were negative, which I would say that this affected the launch of Gotham Knights overall on all consoles and platforms and PC. So that's something to keep in mind. But the people that put the time into the game have enjoyed it. Like myself, I have 100 hours into Gotham Knights. I've enjoyed every bit of it. There's some points where I really hate. We've voiced our opinions on that. And also other moments that have really fun experiences that you can't have in any other game. And if that's what feels interesting about Gotham Knights. I will most likely make a review of my own thoughts about this very, very soon. Highlighting a collection of ideas of positive reactions and negative reactions that I've had throughout my experiences on Gotham Knights. And also you mates have been enjoying it. From the comment section, I've been double checking the comment section and the chats that we've had on live chat as well through live streams and it seems to be mostly positive and some having issues or bugs or occurrences of glitches occurring in the game which staggers the progress or can't finish your boss there's some bugs that occur in the game i can understand that most likely they'll be fixed with future updates as it gets addressed so that's something to keep in mind. But majority of the mates I've talked to have enjoyed the experiences on Gotham Knights, which is a good sign. And that's also reflected on the Steam store page for Gotham Knights with 5,000 reviews highlighting mostly positive. We can go through a breakdown of these reviews because some of them are kind of interesting and some are actually quite funny. So let's get into it. So one of the PC reviewers on the Steam store page didn't highlight this. Nightwing has a fat ass. Yeah, that's it. That's the, that's a review. That's a review. It's got positive reactions. Yep, approve. <laughs> so let's get into a serious review. All right, listen up. You see a lot of conflicting information about this game, and it's clear for that going into for the first time. If you expect a follow up to Arkham Knight, you're in disappointment. Gotham Knight is not an Arkham game by developers' words, and highlights is not part of the Arkham series. And I do agree. This game should be seen as an Arkham game, but there's so many similarities to the game, which makes it kind of hard to actually separate it. So I understand that perspective, if it's your first time ever seeing a Batman game, the first thing that goes through your mind, is it connected to the Arkham series? And if so, is it a step up or a step down? So that comparison happened initially, and I believe many people had that same comparison and made their own judgment on it, and majority of them end up being a disappointment. Completely understand from their first look of the game. I can completely understand that. The next point is what's causing confusion is the likeliness that GK, being Gotham Knights, has to the earlier Batman games and the strong, clear influence that they had upon it. The gameplay has similarities, but tries to do something else completely that's not quite as well oiled as an Arkham game. And at least for its beginning, it works its way up the fun ladder with a rather classic power fantasy climb to power. But as opposed to Batman games, starts you off with less and gives you specialized characters to choose from rather than one bat god to raise the city to the ground with. So I understand, yes, I agree with this. The early game sucks. I, can, I can't say any other way. Early game sucks. The intro, yes, it's kind of interesting for your first time, but if you're doing New Game Plus, even then, it's just like skip intro and then move on to the next point, unless you want to see all the cutscenes with each character. Then that makes sense. But if you're not doing that, just skip uh, intros. That's what I end up doing in my same playthrough. But the characters in the early game just are not as fun. They're very limited in the capabilities that they do possess to reach this high skill ceiling or high interest of actually utilizing the character in order to finish missions and complete missions overall through boss fights and also crimes in Gotham City. So that's the one element that opens up very much at in-game or mid-game. Early game, there's no signs of it. It's very neglected. The early game only has a couple of things being a light attack, a heavy attack, a range light attack, and range heavy attack. That's pretty much all you get with an evade function, and that's pretty much it. They teach you other mechanics at the very start with perfect evades, because there's no counter in the game. So there's like replacements for that, another gimmick in the game to utilize to advantage. But you don't really use it at the very start, because you're so used to the older Batman games, where you just go in, and you're just going for constant hits, and your dodge is usually to counter in that game. So that's the understanding there. So when you don't have the counter here, the thing about using a dodge becomes more 
less relevant to your gameplay because you're just spamming buttons like a fighting game to try and get those kills against the enemy player. Not the kills can cast them. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> the story and narration are quite good and they also talked about this long intro that we mentioned at the start. It doesn't help during one single night like the Arkham games and every time you come back from a mission, you unlock a little more stuff based on what you did during your night on patrol. The gameplay reveals itself relatively slowly and the enemy and player level mechanics are a little weird at the beginning but work pretty well in the end. And I agree. At the very start, you pretty much versus the same enemies and also the understanding of what you do in your patrols and how to be very active in a patrol is very important to so make sure you get more rewards by the end of that night and use that reward in your future missions and your future patrols and that becomes a very fun mechanic to reach your character from say a low level character to max level reaching 30 or 40 in new game plus and get the legendary gear match your modifiers make your build happen for your character that aspect of the game is really really fun and i'm glad that other players are also having fun with that aspect it's a pretty game with a lot of content good narration and a soul dive into one of the very few decent dc entertainment products we were ever gonna get i've been lucky enough to get very little optimization issues other than one crash and yeah the soul pace and grind if you call it that because there's not much of a grind won't please everyone it's maybe not a game of a year contender but by no means is it a bad game. If you jump into Gotham Knights expecting Arkham gameplay, you've got no one to blame but yourself. But if you can appreciate it for what it is, rather than what everyone's insane expectations were, you'll like it. Although fair is fair, the price is insane. If you want to wait a bit for say built updates and get the game on sale, that's just a smart thinking right there. I agree. So right now with those points, I completely agree. Obviously if the price gets cheaper with any game, obviously cheaper game means better product usually because you put less to invest in it. And also during that point, it's had a couple updates and got more uh, say ability fixes, optimization, more DLC, which you use your extra money instead of buying the full copy of the game towards the DLC and support the game like that. So you can enjoy different content towards it as well. So that aspect I understand. And with the expectations of how the game is and not being a game of the year contender, I agree. I did say on my streams from day one and also till now, I, I do say that this game is maybe my rating for a 7 out of 10, but it's still a very fun experience. Sadly, it's got overshadowed by all the negative reviews and expectations that were set, but it is really fun. And there's also a discussion about optimization. Yes, that happens. There's some uh, crashes or drops in frames that occur no matter what in this game. That's what I've encountered. They're trying to address it through each update to fix certain areas where optimization is really bad. So that's good to see. The slow pace grind of it. Yes, I agree to a certain aspect, but then it also does matter because as he mentioned, it's not much of a grind. It isn't because you reach around, say, I'll say 10 hours in, you pretty much get a good understanding of what you need to do with your character. But at the same time, since you max out one character or working on one character or multiple characters, the level is shared between all the characters. So you're not really in a bad position. You don't have to play one character and max it out. You have to start again from the very start. That doesn't happen in this game. It's all shared. So if I play Batgirl, I'll get level 40. I also have the level 40 shared between Nightwing, Robin, and also Red Hood. I get those options there. So I can just go to another class, make a build for it, earn some more rewards, more gear, and start building out my character into a better character overall, but being at the benchmark of level 40 and not level one. And then you get your abilities. There's a bit of grind to that aspect. The abilities, the knighthood, but it's not as bad as many people think. I think the first day, because there's so much confusion of how the game works, that it gets very tedious to complete certain missions, but it's not as bad as what you actually think when you get some game time with one character and then from there jump into another character. I've completed the whole game. I've got everything I wanted done in the game and maxed that all characters with all abilities so the grind is not really there but it's pretty fun either way to get those grinds for legendaries which is a true grind and then future content hopefully in-game content added to the game to increase that in-game time so you have more moments that are honestly crazy to have at in-game because right now it's only about legendary gear and the future game mode being heroic soul so that's one of the reviews highlighting a positive aspect of the game a negative review as well which was posted in the first week or so of the game highlights this constant crashes janky pc controls poor optimization not issues out of 50 euro triple a yeah i think it's 50 euro triple a game should have when did this become the industry norm I can agree to this. There's some weird situations, I would say. The constant crashes, I do think happen. And there's also trigger events that actually activate this, which I believe is the fast travel system. So when you use the fast travel system in Gotham Knights, at certain times in the campaign, it would actually cause constant crashes. We tried this to make sure it was actually guaranteed and not just a one-off. I came back into the game, relaunched it, got into the campaign, did the same teleport to the same fast travel location, just crashed. And then I tried other locations I could fast travel to, crashed as well. So you could only use the bat cycles to get around the map. The janky PC controls. I don't use the PC controls by purpose because I feel like it's just an awkward layout. So I've been using the controller instead. But the aspect of the gameplay when it comes down to the control even or just the overall gameplay in Gotham Knights, you clip on a lot of objects. Say if you're running around a certain part of the map, a barrier hits you and then you get wheelie in this weird stiff position with your character. You're like, wait, I can't get around this corner. I'm like stuck and it becomes like an awkward moment. 
which is kind of annoying when that happens, and that's kind of affecting the gameplay for me. It takes me out of the experience and ruins the immersion of being able to play the character with a, a flow effect when it doesn't feel like it's interrupted in any way and I'm able to just immerse myself in the gameplay. That happens and that's just kind of annoying. The port optimization is there. I feel like they know that and they're trying to address it through each update. So that's good to see. But I feel like it needs much more optimization to make sure it's always constant at 60 FPS or even 30 FPS on majority of systems. Another piece of review highlights the game's fun. If that's all you expect, you'll have fun playing it. Simple as that. I like that. It is 100% great. As we talk about on the channel a lot, majority of the games that we do play, I've seen as pretty much awful by the public eye initially. And we have so much fun with those games, surprisingly. And just really fun to build a character up and reach a god tier status and just enjoy the experience overall. And the aim is always to have fun on the channel. And it seems like the mates that are part of the channel and part of that community also have fun with the games we have and also other games they play. And we also jump on those games to play and have some fun as well with our live streams and actually being inviting mates into games and helping them out as well. There's a lot of fun times we've had on stream and it's just really cool to see another person that's also a review on pc highlighting gotham knights and having that same thought process if your goal is to have fun you will achieve that that is pretty much how you should see any game and enjoy every game at that point another one that made me laugh is being clowned on by my friend group because i bought this game which i think other than performance and a few other gameplay decisions it's still a good game we need to get the games rating up on steam so i can have a last laugh there you go we're all gonna have a last laugh at this point and that is just great to see that Many people are enjoying the experience. And there's another one. Robin's ass is so fine. There you go. <laughs> but these reviews are hilarious and really fun to look at, especially the positives and the cons of the game. And just talking about it and having a discussion about the state of Gotham Knights overall. So it's always very interesting to see how the reaction of Gotham Knights has changed from the initial date to a week after. Being mostly positive. But mate, tell me your opinions and thoughts in the comment section down below. What was the funniest review that you saw here on the channel about Gotham Knights? And alongside that, what are your thoughts in the comment section down below about Gotham Knights? What do you like about it? What do you hate about it? Tell us in the comment section down below. I'd love to know. As always, mates, it's a pleasure to have you guys on the channel as we go through this, and I'll catch you, mates, next time. Bye. Road to 200k subscribers. Let's get it, mates.